Good evening and welcome to our show. Oklahoma and Texas A&M, two very high profile football programs that haven't played each other since 1951 will meet tomorrow down in Norman. Sooners practicing hard this week. Quarterback Kale Gundy will be a key Saturday. The senior from Midwest City will see a lot of blitzing and will need to get rid of the ball in the hurry. The new system under Watson Brown should be efficient. Aubrey Beaver is working with Lucius Selman here. Beaver's made three tackles against TCU, broke up a couple of passes. Kicker Scott Blanton has made his last 12 field goals. He had no attempts at TCU. He's also doing the punting. Sooner receivers caught 16 passes last Saturday, although this sequence shows they don't catch anything here. One of the bright spots in Fort Worth was the play of number 89, and that was Juwan Penny. Here he is. He caught two passes for 30 yards and is one of the fastest players on the team. Also one of the most improved in Oklahoma's core of wide receivers, probably the strength of this Oklahoma team. Lots of Sooner fans thought they were getting a break when Texas A&M announced it was suspending five of its players, including super running back Greg Hill. But last week, Hill's replacement, Rodney Thomas, was sensational. Let's take a look at this play where we will see perfect execution by the Aggies. Watch the blocking here. Thomas has speed to turn the corner and outrun the Tiger defenders. There was no score at halftime of this game, but A&M pulled away and they went on to win it with a final of 24 to nothing. The Aggies had several big plays, none bigger than this one. Look at the one blocking here on the corner. Outstanding. Thomas listed as a 25 to 1 long shot to win the Heisman by one preseason national publication. Here are the 80 yard touchdown against LSU. Look at Rodney Thomas's numbers. He will have 25 carries that afternoon, 201 yards. That's eight yards a carry, and you saw the long touchdown. Thomas is playing because last year's star running back Hill is suspended. Slocum made that move prior to the Cotton Bowl last December. Hill is one of the players who is accused of accepting money illegally from a booster. He is practicing with the team, but not playing at this point. A&M's other big offensive play comes on a screen pass here. This is something Oklahoma will have to watch on Saturday. Aggies really like to get the ball in McElroy's hands. This is Leland McElroy. Corey Pulling was the quarterback. It's a 58-yard touchdown. LSU cannot contain McElroy. Texas A&M's defense is world class. The down linemen are the strength of the team, but the Aggies also have the best linebackers and defensive backs in the Southwest Conference. One name that recruiting fanatics will remember is Sam Adams. Number 95 here, 6'4", 269 pounder. He terrorizes LSU in week one, almost signed with OU out of Texas three years ago. Had 59 tackles, five sacks last season. This A&M defense had Three first-round draft picks in the last two years, but they have not slacked off one bit. The shutout in week one was no accident. These guys run well and hit very, very hard, as you can see from this video. They get great weak side support, no place to go, and that's uh, defense, as you hear, wins championships. That's one reason A&M has won the past two Southwest Conference championships and uh, are in contention to win a national championship and the heavy favorite to win again down in the SWC. Lots of opinions on who will win this game. We asked several Oklahoma members of the media who they thought would come out on top. Well, I think A&M and why is because this is a game between uh, a team that is still suffering probation and a team that's about to get hammered by probation. Now, the team that's going to get hammered by both probation is A&M, so they still have the studs they recruited illegally. So. They're going to play a team that's, that is very shallow in depth and in OU, so I say they'll win by about 14. I'm taking a and I'll say it's 27-21. A&M plays smash mouth football. That's what fans will see on Saturday, but I think this is a game that Oklahoma will establish that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with this season. Well, I'll have to go with Texas A&M. Obviously, looking at Oklahoma last week in the TCU game, too many third and five, third and eights. They get in that kind of situation against A&M. It's all over with with the blitz. They'll be sending everybody. I do like Oklahoma's attitude going into this game. Uh, they do perceive themselves as the underdog, but look at it as a great opportunity as a breakthrough game to break through and get some national attention. But uh, I just think early in the year, if this game was played maybe a couple of weeks later, Oklahoma might be the pick. But I think uh, A&M at this point of the season has got to be it by maybe a touchdown. Well, uh, Gary Gibbs said it himself, speed kills. And I think speed's going to kill OU this, this week. Uh, I'd say uh, A&M by at least touchdown, maybe 10 points. Well, I think it's going to be a game that's going to be won in the trenches because both teams are going to come at each other. It's going to be a fun game to watch. The A&M is going to make Kel Gundy win it with his arm, I think. He, they're going to come seven, eight guys. But if he plays anything the way he did last week, I think the Sooners can win this game. His receivers played excellent. 
uh, the running game can be there. James Allen can find places to run. A&M's offense uh, is a running game, but I think that's playing into the strength of OU's defense. So from KOTV, I say it's going to be the Sooners by seven. All right, Meg, your pick. Sooners will win the toss, elect a kick. On the opening kickoff, A&M will fumble. OU recovers on the A&M six. They take it in in two plays, take the lead. The crowd will take over, and Oklahoma will stun the nation. 13 to three Sooners. Everyone's objective there, but uh, Mick Cornett, that was kind of fun interviewing our own guy. We've got a great show ahead, so stay tuned. We'll be back in two minutes. was sold and the new owner changed formats and put Al on waivers. I talked with Eshbach about his stint in Kansas City, OU football, and where he'll end up next. Al, you've had a chance for the last eight months to take a look at uh, the Oklahoma football program from Kansas City. What's it like looking at it from up there? The people are almost apathetic to Oklahoma football up there now. It's not the hate that you had a few years ago because Oklahoma wasn't dominating. People hated Switzer's guts. Let's face it, they hated Barry Switzer's guts. They wanted to see OU lose because of Switzer, who I compare to Errol Flynn, one of my idols in life, for many reasons. Uh, but with Gary Gibbs, they don't, it's like he doesn't make the people mad. Plus, they're not winning national championships, so they don't really hate uh, OU football. It's, and I got a lot of Nebraska fans that called me up there, and they talk about Colorado. Well, you know, when was it then that uh, Nebraska wasn't talking about Oklahoma? But Things could change, but it, I think it's different when you're not winning since uh, Switzer wasn't hated, was, was hated by everybody. Big game tomorrow for Oklahoma. The Sooners have not won the big one the last few years, and uh, A&M is a big one, certainly in this part of the country. Huge. This city, this town, the state needs something to ride on saying Oklahoma football is back. Uh, I don't have the answer, but when's the last time Oklahoma's beaten a top 10 team? Ranked in the top 10 the day they played them. I can't think of it. Uh, they, need, they need this game to get something popped. They lose, it's negative again. Everything is negative. Again, they start thinking, oh, can we beat Tex? Can we beat Nebraska? Can we beat Colorado? If they beat A, they said, hey, we're as good as anybody. It is so critical to win the big game and, and say that the, the program is coming back. It's huge. Hey, who do you think will win the game? Well, I think... Talent wins football games. Who is A and M? You look at them. I mean, they have the best players money can buy. Uh, <laughs> there are, I mean, they just got great athletes, running backs. Although the NCAA's penalized them and all that's going on, but they got tremendous players. Sam Adams, uh, what a dominating force that he is. They named a beer after the guy, by the way. Uh, and you, you like the team with the best players, and until Oklahoma shows me they can beat these type of teams, that um. I'm just, oh, I just don't, I, I think Gibbs is recruited pretty well, but the numbers aren't there, and I wonder if the mental attitude saying, hey, can we beat A&M, and, yeah. and that, that's going to, I think, show a lot for the rest of the season. If they can win this one, then they can say we can beat Texas. If they can't win this one, they're, they're, they're questioning themselves again. You mentioned Kansas City's reaction to Gary Gibbs and Barry Switzer and the Oklahoma football program. What about Billy Tubbs in basketball? Oh, they hate him. I mean. Do they? I, I don't think as much as they did maybe five years ago, and they had the fiasco and winning, Lawrence. It? Yeah, it, that's it. <laughs> Everything has to do with winning, but they still, I had calls, you know, bitching about Billy after the Kansas State game when he didn't give him any credit, and they went nuts, and they, and they, they don't like Billy. They really don't, and uh, uh, they're spoiled with the Jayhawks up there, and the Missouri and Kansas fans get there, but nothing like the OU-OSU fans, and I, I couldn't explain to the people in Kansas City what OU-OSU was like, the way they felt toward each other, the fans did. There's nothing like it. Missouri and Kansas, a little bit, but not like OU, OSU. What's in the future for you, Al? Uh, unfortunate uh, that a uh, company bought out your station and uh, you and a bunch of others are put back on the street, but you'll land on your feet. Where will that be? Either Oklahoma City uh, in Oklahoma or Kansas City. I, and that decision is going to come uh, this weekend. In Oklahoma uh, City doing what? Doing sports talk at uh, WLS again. I've talked to the people. I've met with them this past week. and. Uh, met with 1340 up in Kansas City, and uh, then going to get with my wife later this weekend, and uh, and my two little kids, my, Max and Alex, they got to be in this eight and six years old. What they want to do, where the most uh, junk food is, in what city, and uh, make some decisions. And uh, 
I love this city. I had a good experience in, in Kansas City also. Not the way it ended, uh, but uh, it's a nice place to live. And uh, the weather, though, was pitiful. Snowstorms and uh, floods. Uh, I built a boat, Dean, uh, during the great flood up there this summer. <laughs> Big Al, I'd forgotten uh, how much we loved him or how much we somethinged him. Al tonight, by the way, is our guest on Switzer and Blevins, that program, very late because of all the specials we